Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our virtual workshop, our marketing series, Photo Editing with Snapseed. My name is Heather Fay, and I am the Regional Program Director and Botetourt Advisor for the Roanoke Regional Small Business Development Center. I am so excited you all are here today. If you want to open up the chat as I'm going over some housekeeping and let us know how you are showing up today, we'd love to hear what adjectives you have as how you're showing up. And you can also, if you want to add your name, where you're from, this is a great opportunity for you to network with some of your fellow small business owners across the region and across the state. So a couple housekeeping things as we get started. Our virtual workshop today will last one hour and we are recording this workshop and we'll send this out to you. And we'll also be recording it for internal purposes. So if you don't mind keeping your microphone muted, that would be terrific. However, if you do have a question, feel free to add that to the chat or you can raise your hand. At the bottom of your screen, there is a Zoom menu um, where you can, shows different emotions and there is also an opportunity for you to raise your hand and I will keep my eye out for that. And as I mentioned, feel free to use the chat throughout today's workshop. Also grab a pen and paper so you can take notes. Um, there's so many great things and we are so blessed to have such an amazing presenter who I'll be introducing in just a few minutes, um, Ms. Nicole. And if there's anything else that you have questions about as we're going or you want Nicole to dig in a little bit deeper, don't hesitate to um, raise your hand or post that in the chat. All right, for those of you that are not familiar with the Roanoke Regional Small Business Development Center, we serve the Greater Roanoke Valley, Franklin County, the New River Valley, and the Allegheny Highlands. We are a part of the Virginia Small Business Development Center Network, which is comprised of 27 different centers across the Commonwealth of Virginia. Shown here on our screen is a snapshot of our homepage as well as several different resources. We have articles and worksheets in our library. And if you haven't gotten matched with an advisor yet and you're in our service area, I will be sending, posting a link in the chat where you can go through the advisor match. That way we can connect you to the best advisor for you and your business at this season of your business. All right, and this is what the advisor match looks like. There, it'll ask you a couple questions as you're going through and get you connected to your advisor and you can schedule an appointment with them. A quick announcement, if there are any foodiepreneurs here, and that is for any type of food industry business, we have our first ever foodiepreneur symposium on July 25th at the Vinton War Memorial. And that is hosted by us. It'll be a full day session and we're excited. I will also post a link to that in our chat as well. All right. So today's workshop is one of our free additional education and training part programs that we offer. And how do we do that? Our funders are in through a cooperative agreement with the United States Small Business Administration, America's SBDC, Virginia SBDC, and the Mason Enterprise Center at George Mason University. Pandemic related capacity building grant funding has been provided by Go Virginia. And we want to give a special shout out to our host, the Roanoke Regional Chamber of Commerce, where our headquarters are located in downtown Roanoke. Our additional funding is provided by other small businesses across the region that are also small business champions. All right, y'all, this is the moment we have been waiting for. Our Guest presenter today is Ms. Nicole Cooper. Nicole is our regional marketing advisor and she is just a vault of information and knowledge and I cannot wait to learn for, from Nicole today and I bet you can't wait either. So Nicole, I'm gonna stop sharing and turn the conversation over to you. Thank you so much, Heather, and thank you everyone for being here today. Um, I am excited to talk about Snapseed. I'm excited to talk about photo editing. Um, things that I, I really love in my spare time, and I, I get so excited when I get to make it part of what I do for a living. Um, and so I know as business owners, um, especially folks, if you are doing a lot of your own social media, um, photos and photo editing can sometimes be a little daunting, and you think, how does this person always get such great pictures? And um, it, we're going to talk a little bit about ways to make that happen, specifically in this case using the Snapseed app. 
And the reason I chose to use Snapseed, well, there are many reasons. One, it's free. Um, Snapseed used to be um, a paid app that it was actually um, one of the pricier apps back in the day. Um, and then Google acquired it and made it free. And there were several reasons for that. Um, one is that Google was really working on bringing up their Google Photos and, and their um, Google Pixel phone. And so uh, they were really trying to get into that market more. So they acquired it. Um, and what Google really wants is good content. And the more that um, they could get good content um, uh, along their search engines and into their products, um, the happier and better place we would all be. Um, so they acquired the app. And now, as you know, if you ever go looking for photo editing apps, there are more than you could ever imagine having to choose from. And it can be a really tough place to start. And I'm not here to say that Snapseed is the, the end all be all. It is a great place to start from. And if there's specific things you like about Snapseed, then we can talk about other apps. We can look for other apps that are that work in those areas. But Snapseed is a great one-stop shop. And so much of it is intuitive and easy to use. Um, once we get started, I'm going to um, sc screen share from my own phone. Um, so we will go through editing some photos and I'll use the app with you in real time so you can see what it looks like. Because sometimes we get a little pedantic as we kind of get through some of the photo editing terminology and um, some of the ins and outs, but I think sometimes being able to see it and 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 access it in real time um, can be really beneficial and helpful. And if as we're going, if you see me editing or you have a specific question, you can stop me um, and we can see what would happen if we did X, Y, or Z. So um, I'll allow that, you know, your feedback to kind of guide me once we get started there. Um, any questions before we get started? Okay. Um, before we actually get into Snapseed, sometimes, um, and I will preface this by saying I was a teacher in the classroom for eight years. I just recently left the classroom. I would teach Snapseed um, and photo editing and digital photography as part of my courses. I would start with Snapseed as early as first and second grade. So there is a lot in there for you. There, there are so many things in there and you can take it really, really far, you can go very, very basic. And that I would teach first grade through eighth grade. Um, and the kids really loved it. They were very excited. And of course, they would always find things that I didn't know was there and show me ways that they had used it in really exciting ways. So um, in this case, we're not going to be talking about Snapseed to make highly edited, um, artsy looking photos. You can do that. For today, much of what I've created for us is based around taking photographs that were done naturally and having them continue to have a natural look, but we can talk about ways to adjust the composition perhaps through cropping and some of the other tools in Snapseed, um, but we don't want to make our photos look highly, highly edited. There is a place for that, but generally in social media, specifically marketing for your business, um, you don't want the photo to distract from your message. You want it to go with your message or be the message. But it, if it is overly edited, it can be a distraction. So we're gonna talk about ways to keep your photos still edited, but not having that overly edited look. Um, sometimes folks will turn up the contrast a little too far, the saturation, and we'll talk about what those things mean here in just a minute. But there are four compositional concepts that we really cannot get around. Um, and this goes beyond anything in any um, editing app that you're going to use. And um, so if you're taking notes, if you have a, a pen and paper, or if you have um, a, a Google a doc help pulled up in another window or something, these are the, the four main things, uh, your compositional concepts. You want a clearly defined subject and background. That doesn't mean that the subject and background have to both be in focus, but we have to know that we have a subject and a background. Um, second, we need a sense of balance in any photo that you take. And that, this brings in the rule of thirds. Um, I don't, some of you might be uh, already familiar with what the idea of the rule of thirds is. You might have seen when you use your photo, your camera to take a photo or to edit, you get what looks like a tic-tac-toe board. Um, that is a really wonderful tool to help you use the rule of thirds. And that's basically 
if you can get your subject lined up in, and this is a very overly simplistic uh, discussion of rule of thirds, if you can get your subject into where those lines cross in those that sort of tic-tac board, and we'll look at that more when I open it up and you can see what I'm talking about, that really has a pleasing effect for the eye. Our eyes need to be able to identify the subject. You're the viewer of whatever photo, you don't want them going, what am I supposed to be looking at? You as the photographer, you as the person taking the photo should be helping the viewer, as I said with the first one, a clearly defined subject and background and as a sense of balance. So the viewer feels like, uh, why are you just showing me this sort of blurry picture of mountains? Having something in the foreground, having something in the background helps to create that sense of balance. And we'll look a little further at that. So uh, sense of balance is number two. And that's where your rule of thirds is. Three um, is to consider your point of view when you're taking pictures. Often when we're out taking photos, we're just holding it up in front of us and taking a picture. Um, it's very rare that the perfect angle for every photo is whatever your height is. Um, so I, when I'm taking a picture and I often fall into the same thing where I'm just shooting it from my eye level. So point of view, think about different uh, angles and aspects that you can um, create photographs from, uh, you know, standing on a stool or getting down to a lower um, perspective, holding your, just standing up, but holding your phone down. There are different ways to achieve that. So um, that's one concept as you're thinking about creating good photos um, is the point of view. Remembering that your camera um, is not just another set of eyes. Sometimes we go out, uh, we'll be on vacation or we will be out on a hike or something like that. And we're taking all kinds of photos because everything looked great to our eyes. And then we get home and we think, well, these photos don't look anything like what I thought they were going to look like. It's not what I remember from my eyes. Well, number one, your eyes don't have a frame. Your photo does. Um, so you have all of this beautiful peripheral vision, generally speaking, and there are so many other things. Um, but that camera, it does not work like an eye. Also, your eyes are connected to your brain. So your brain is a very subjective place. Um, so the camera is objective. It's just taking that image, it's collecting that light and, and saving it. Um, so it is very objective. But the eye, because it's connected to the brain, is very subjective. So um, taking in point of view when you're, when you're taking photographs of whatever it is uh, that you're photographing, um, will help to create and help you to create more meaningful um, and engaging images. And then um, number four and the final concept that really cannot be denied is there has to be a degree of simplicity to your photos. Again, your, your viewer shouldn't have to be wondering what's happening in this photo, what, what am I supposed to be looking at? Um, simple, keep it simple, don't overthink it. And if you can take some of these concepts and practice and um, kind of look at photos that you think are like, that's, I like that photo and then kind of break it down. Why do you like it? And then look for some of those concepts. I think you're going to find that you'll be able to identify um, why you like that photo once you understand these concepts. And again, this may be something very familiar to some of you, but I wanted to make sure we covered this before we actually got into Snapseed because Snapseed can fix many things. Um, composition, point of view, it can help a little bit, but it's not going to do that kind of work for you. So, um, and if this is something you're particularly interested in, there's, there's so much out there in terms of tutorials um, on YouTube and that sort of thing, but also uh, I am available through um, the SBDC. You can um, book time with me. Uh, my time is, is free. So if there's a specific app or a specific concept that you ever want to talk about or um, maybe learn a little bit more about, please reach out and I would love to be able to talk about that with you. Um, so it's about 2.15. I would love us to get started digging in unless there are any questions so far. If not, I will go ahead and let me get, I will start screen sharing. So <clears throat> okay.
Okay. Heather, can you see my phone screen? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to open up Snapseed. So when you open Snapseed, this will be um, or should be um, the first screen that you see. Snapseed is not available for your desktop or, or laptop computer. It is available for uh, mobile devices. Um, and as I said, since it's a Google product, it is absolutely available in Android as well as in iOS. <clears throat> and you are welcome, as I'm going through this, to open up uh, Snapseed on your device and kind of look at some of the things that I'm talking about. Clearly, you won't have access to my photos, but you can pull up a photo and kind of go along with me from um, as we go through this. So first thing, um, tap anywhere to open a photo and it should pull up from the bottom. So what you'll see is it's given me some previews of some of the most recent photos. Um, I was out at a golf course last night where you can also feed the goats. So I love going to feed the goats more than I like playing golf. But um, so the goats are recent, um, but I have a folder that I'm gonna go to here in a minute. One thing I do wanna point out is your options, open from device, camera, and open latest image. Generally, you do not want to shoot photographs using the Snapseed app or any app. I always suggest you use your phone or whatever device that you're on, use that camera roll rather than shooting directly from Snapseed. Apps crash. Um, also, sometimes when you're shooting in them, it can sort of be proprietary and kind of hard to export um, just depending on the app. So it's just not a good idea to, to use the app to shoot photography through. So just use your regular camera roll. <coughs> Excuse me. In this case, I'm going to choose open from device. Up at the top, you see it says photos and albums. I've created an album for today, our Snapseed course. And then I just have loaded in a bunch of photos that I thought we could go through and look at different ways to edit. Um, and I'm going to talk to you not about every option. That would be a series of courses <laughs> in the snaps uh, in understanding Snapseed, but I'm going to go through some of the, the main ones, the big ones, um, the ones that I think you're going to find are the most useful for you. Um, so the first thing that I like to do once I've chosen a photograph is, um, so let me start with, okay, I recently took a cruise. So I'm going to open this photo from a, my cruise. <coughs> the first thing that I like to do um, when I'm opening an, a photo to edit and it is to use the crop tool. So I'll show you how to get to that crop tool, but first I want to talk about at the bottom, you're going to see some presets already there. So this is kind of your quick hit. Um, and sometimes I'll go through and see what it'll do to my photo. Um, depending on what it is, how do I like the shadows? Sometimes so here I've clicked pop and you can see I was shooting this through plexiglass. So when I go back to current, you don't see it so much, but when I click pop in the upper left-hand corner, you can see a reflection on the plexiglass. Um, so those are just some little things to look out for when you're looking to edit. Um, the accentuate tool um, can really cause some really um, deep saturation. So sometimes I'll just look and see what's there, but generally I'm going to avoid the presets. Not that there's anything wrong with them, but um, once you're familiar with this app, you're going to want to know what to do really, really quickly. You're going to know what you want to do. Um, so because when you start to edit, it can affect all literally every corner of the photo. The first thing I like to do is go to crop. So that's under your tools section along that top line you'll see the option to crop the photo. Um, and from here, you can choose however you want to crop it. Um, now you can see those lines came up that I was talking about to determine the rule of thirds. Um, so in this case, I can, and, and the rule of thirds is not a hard and fast rule, but if I wanted to sort of line things up along those crosshairs, I, I'm, in this case, I'm using that center one. So this one is a little bit different. So I might choose to crop out the top um, because it was a bit of a, a visual distraction. The other option you have 
that's similar to um, to the crop is the perspective tool. So if you go into perspective, um, this is really where you can tilt your photos, move them left and right, up and down. So when I go in here, I can start to tilt it and that'll shave a little bit off the top um, in, because of the way that I used it. Um, in the upper right-hand corner, you can see what looks like a square with a line through it. If I hold that button down, that's a force touch. That will um, show me what the photo looked like, if I can get it to work, um, or I can just hold it and get an idea of what the photo looked like before I edited it and when I did not, before and after. Yep. So there it is. It's a force touch. And I can see, uh, and then if I, I can just click the X if I don't want to use that. Um, but in this case, I'm going to go in, I'm going to just, if I do the up and down perspective, you can also see and if you do too much of that, it can cause some strange over-exaggerations and you want to be really careful. But for me, I'm looking at the top of the screen. I'm trying to make sure that um, it's pretty equidistant. So then I'm going to click the X and um, that will save it. Um, not save it. It just, it, sorry, by clicking that check mark, it accepts the edit. Uh, if I wanted to not accept it, I could X out. And then now what you see at the top, there's a square with an arrow over it. If I click that, that allows me to undo any edits. I can view any edits that I've done. And if you see down in the corner, um, it'll show me where I cropped it, the perspective option that I took, and the original. So I can go through and see all of the changes I've made so far. And if there was anything I wanted to get rid of at any point, I could click on it again and I could click the little trash can to get rid of that specific edit if I didn't want it anymore, if I changed my mind. Um, or if I wanted to go back and um, I could use, you can see those little bars um, to show that I could adjust it. So if I wanted to crop it some more. Um, using the crop tool, there are presets already at the bottom there as well. If you wanted to see what they look like, the big one is the square because that's the main way we use it, uh, the main way we use Instagram. But I'm not going to, I'm going to leave this just as it is. Not that it's perfect, but let's just go from there. We're not here to perfect the picture so much as to understand Snapseed. So I'm going to click that back arrow. <coughs> and now we're going to get into um, some of the more interesting parts. Oh boy, that's bothering me. Let me see if I can change this perspective just a little. I think that's going to be under rotate. So rotate will allow me to move it just slightly. Or if you have a picture, let's say you took a picture and the words are backwards and you want them reading forward, you can use the rotate under the rotate option. Um, this is also where you can straighten angles. If you're taking a photo, especially if you can see the horizon um, and it's a little bit off center, this is one way to adjust that and um, those guidelines will help you in that way. So that was under the rotate. So, so far we've looked at the crop option. We've looked at perspective and rotate. The big one is under tune image. So once you go into tune image, if you uh, force touch or hold this or touch the screen, uh, you will see that a whole menu comes up. And the first thing that I generally go to, and this is just me, um, is ambiance. The reason I like ambiance, it adjusts saturation and contrast at the same time. You can individually adjust the con contrast and saturation and we'll, we'll look at what that does. But ambiance is for me, one of my first stops. And then by moving your finger left and right, you can see how it changes the photo and see how it changes the color, uh, the contrast, the saturation. Um, again, you really don't wanna to go too hard any, no matter how you're editing, generally keep an eye on the, the number at the top. So right now the ambiance is plus 25. If I force hold, I can see how the photo changes, maybe not greatly, um, but maybe enough for me to be happy with it from here. I can go back to that menu. I can go to brightness. 
Now this adjusts everything on the photo that you're editing. I'm gonna show you some ways to affect specific areas. So if the only thing I wanted uh, brightened was Allure of the Seas, the words Allure of the Seas and maybe the Royal Caribbean logo, I can do that. But in this function, in um, the tools function, the brightness, all of these, they're affecting the entire photograph. So um, adjusting your whiteness, uh, your brightness rather, um, if I adjust the contrast, changes the picture dramatically. Some, In some ways, this can kind of give it, in this case, kind of has a retro feel to me, like I was using an older camera. If that's what you're going for, that's fine. But if you want to keep it as though it was a natural, uh, naturally occurring light, um, that's something to kind of keep in mind. And often what happens is your eye will, will kind of let you know what looks right. Um, sometimes we need to step away <laughs> from something if we've been editing it for too long uh, and, and get a fresh perspective. Saturation. Be really careful with saturation. This is often where people are like, oh, I love those bright colors, but it could be that you're looking at the bright blue and forgetting that the tan has now turned orange and that the pink is now neon or whatever. So um, if I, I'm just gonna over-exaggerate and turn up saturation, this does not look natural at all. Um, and it can be a distraction if I'm using this to advertise something or just even just share you know, that I'm a business owner just back from vacation and here's a picture from my vacation. It's like, no, nah, that's not a picture from your vacation. It's a picture you took and then you edited it uh, really, really heavily. So be really careful. And then if I go the other way, you start getting very tonal into black and white, um, which has its place. But in this case, we really don't want to oversaturate the image. I was lucky to have good light here. So I probably don't want to mess with my saturation too much. Uh, but I did want to make you aware of what it is. And then there are highlights and shadows. Highlights are bringing out the places where there's already light and making it lighter. And same with shadows. Shadows will look for those dark places and work on making them even darker or lighter. You see, it gets very, very dark in those spaces. And then the warmth. Again, be really careful. You can give it, this gives it a, almost a very tinted look and now it's very cool when I go the other way. So this sort of affects um, your white balance in some way. Um, so sometimes one thing you can do is look for something that's white in the photograph if you're looking for that kind of balance um, and making sure that it looks, uh, still it holds its integrity in terms of how much warmth you're adding. Um, or how much coolness you're adding. So um, those are the basic functions you're gonna use. And again, um, if you look at the bottom, there's a preset there. It looks like a little magic wand. That is an auto. Uh, I don't know of a time that auto has ever corrected to a picture that I was absolutely happy with. You can try it and see from time to time, but generally, um, not going to be the best at, at creating what the image that you want to create, but you can give it a try. Sometimes it'll work. Um, especially I, I'm not, if you have portraits, faces, I'm not really happy with the way that it um, affects faces. Uh, so once you have the photo, the photo to a point that you're happy with, you can click the X. Again, nothing is un -doable, un un undoable. We can repair, go back or change anything at any point. Um, another tool I wanted to show you is the details tool. Under details, there are two options. There's structure and sharpening. Generally, I don't mess with sharpening. Um, that is going to come up more if you're looking at something you're going to print. But let's play with structure a little bit and see how it creates some real harder, uh, hard definition. Um, which can be fine if you're looking for something to pull out some of the details um, or if you want to soften it, you can take it the other way. So specifically looking at that umbrella in the middle of the picture, there's a walkway, there's a person walking up. If I go really, really hard to structure, you can actually begin to see some of the planks of wood and some of the details in it. 
If I go hard the other way and I pull structure back, it becomes much, much softer. Uh, and you sort of, you lose some of those details, but now we see the person more that's walking. So losing the, that detail might make other details pop. So uh, just keeping an eye on structure, which is under the details tool, um, that's really great. Um, in nature photography, I love to see when people will use structure sometimes to pull out uh, reflections uh, in the water, um, ripples in the sand. It can be really lovely um, in nature photography. <coughs> Excuse me. And even some in um, some food photography. But again, you don't want to overdo it and make it a distraction. So I'm going to leave the structure here, go back into tools and show you a few other items, and then we'll we'll switch to a different photo um, so I can show you how to edit um, a different style photo. Uh, we're not going to go over curves, white balance. I encourage you to play with the app some and see what that looks like. Um, I'm not going to go into expand. I will go into selective, but I'm going to use a different photo for that. I will try to talk to you a little bit about the brush tool. We won't go into healing if you've ever been in the uh, in the dark room and you've done like dodging and burning and some of those kind of editing techniques. Check out the healing tool, or I'm sorry, that's the brush tool. The healing tool, I'm going to try and get to. The brush tool will be your dodge and burn. Um, so if you have any interest or knowledge in that area, check out the brush tool. Uh, we won't get into HDR escape. I might show you some glamour glow. Um, we're going to avoid some of the more artsy things, the vintage, grainy, retrolux. I will show you the black and white. Um, I'm going to show you portrait, a little bit of lens blur and vignette, and then I want to definitely make sure I take time to show you text. Um, because if you are creating something for your business and you want to put text on a photo um, that you've created and you're just one-stop shop, you don't want to have to also open Canva, you don't want to have to open another app. There are, Snapseed does have some options for you there. So in this case though, I do wanna show you vignette. So vignette um, brings in a shadow all around the outside of the photograph. This is why I was saying I'd like to crop first because um, the vignette, if I'm using vignette and I create a photo that I like and then I decide I wanna crop something, I may be cropping off a corner and now I've affected the vignette, um, the effects of the vignette. Now I have one corner that's bright and another corner that's dark, which may be fine, um, but it can be problematic. And then you have to go back and remove that um, vignette layer and try it again. So with the vignette, <coughs> there you have two ways that you can um, affect the photo in vignette. You can affect the inner brightness, and the outer brightness. You can also, by pinching and zooming, pinching in and out, you, the field that you will be editing within or around will be affected by the size of the circle. Now I'm just pinching. Um, you can also go down to that bottom. Um, I'm sorry. There is, oh, so the, it is, you can move it around. Um, so, and if we were in, Lens blur, which sort of does the same thing. Um, this, you have vignette on, on here, but you can, um, there's a way to edit uh, within these circles uh, to make them the transition. Here we go, transition to make it uh, shallower or larger. But in this case, we're working specifically, sorry for that little side note, the vignette specifically. So I can make the ving vignette larger or smaller by pinching and uh, zooming in and out. So I can make my, I, it's preset to 50%. If I want more or if I want less, I want to actually bring up the brightness I can. So what I'll usually do is leave a little bit of vignette and then I will come into the inner brightness and lift that up and see how it affects my photo. I can do the forced hold, see the difference. And I may keep it, I may not. I don't have to put the vignette in the center. Again, this is a great way to affect where your viewer's eye is going, getting control of that photo so that you are giving them that clearly defined subject and background. So if my, if 
the goal was for me to bring your eye to this tent um, here in the middle, I can help do that with the vignette option. It really helps guide the viewer's eyes. Again, don't overdo it. Um, as tempting as it can be, it can look cool, especially if you're the one working on it and you've been looking at it for a long time and you've seen it go through all of its iterations. Uh, you think that looks really cool. Well, you can save a copy of it and we'll talk about how to save here in just a minute. <clears throat> but um, so maybe I'm happy with that. So if that's all I want to do with this photo, if I say that I'm happy with it, because um, I want to make sure that I have time to, to show you another kind of photo. Now, if I want to save it, I'm going to click on the export option. This is really important. Do not save using just the save option. Save a copy. What happens when I click save is it says, would you like Snapseed to modify this photo? So it's going to take the actual photo from my camera roll and permanently change it. I don't want that. I want to keep that original copy. I may decide I want to do something else with it. Um, I may want to do a side by side, whatever it is. I'm going to click don't allow. So really get in the habit of clicking save a copy. So now it has saved a copy to my camera roll. Again, it's still editable. I can pull up all of my edits. If I wanted to get rid of my details where I sharpened it a little bit, I can do that and get rid of it. If I want to look at where we started, that's where we started. Um, and you have lots of options from there. But save a copy and then we can go on and edit um, another photo. So while we're while I'm pulling up another one, is this might be a good time to um, see if there are any other quite any questions before we go on. <coughs> and since I'm sharing my screen, I'm uh, Heather. I'm relying on you to tell me if there are any any if there's anything. Um, that I can't see because I've got screen share taken over. No so, worries. Uh, Richard had a question about yeah. which screen sharing app are you using? So I'm using, um, I have an iPhone and I have a MacBook. So the way I'm sharing my screen is by screen mirroring. The two uh, play nicely together. So I'm just mirroring my screen. Awesome. Thank you. Any other sure. questions? I don't see anything in the chat, Nicole, but if anyone has any, feel free to unmute yourself or you can uh, place those in the chat too. So I'm going to pull up um, a selfie. I'm going to use myself um, just because I didn't think it was nice to use somebody else's photo um, to do some weird stuff with. Uh, a few months ago, I ran a Ragnar in Richmond. This was a selfie that I took. Um, Portrait is one of the options, and I could be happy with that. Um, I'm not particularly happy with everything about what it did to that photo. Um, sometimes when you hit smooth, it looks really, almost looks like a glamour shot, so you got to be really careful with that. Um, maybe you're okay with that, and that's totally fine, but um, if you want a more natural look, be really careful with any of those smoothing options. But I'm going to go in, and I'm going to show you the portrait tool. So portrait is next to head pose. There's some weird things that you can do in head pose. Uh, I, I won't get into it today, but you can, you can add smiles to people's faces. <laughs> you can add frowns, you can tilt their head. It's kind of creepy. Um, so I'm gonna go into portrait. Portrait has a bunch of presets. It has, if you look at the bottom, spotlights, eyes, combo, that sort of thing. Um, and usually I will go through here and if, see if I can find something that I specifically like. Um, you can go through and adjust, like sort of like we just did, going through each individual tool. And you can see like, then it starts to get like, whoa, why do her eyes look so crazy, like glow in the dark? So be really, really careful. Um, use these tools sparingly. This app will specifically, this tool in this app will specifically look for faces. 
Sometimes if you have a lot of faces or a partially obscured face, it will tell you it can't find it. Um, and then in, in that case, I would either say we can use the select tool, which I'm gonna show you next. I'm not gonna save anything in here, but you can see there you have options. Um, again, just play with it. But people will ask about portraits, how to make selfies or pictures of folks look a little bit better, ways to sort of clean it up. Um, so let me show you the select tool. Select tool is really, really powerful. So let's say I wanted to darken up, there's a shadow from my hat under my eyes. I can tap somewhere on my screen and bring up my select tool. Um, so it says, it starts with a, there's a B there, but there is, if you drag up and down, you can see I can also adjust the contrast the saturation and the structure, things that we've already looked at in um, the, other, the other toolbox, the other part of the toolbox. So if I pinch, like zoom in on this, you can see anywhere it's red is the area that I'm going to be working with. So if I just wanted to work in this area, if I just wanted to lighten up this area, if I click brightness, then click left and right, I can start to brighten up that area. Again, I can force hold the screen to see what it looks like before and after. I think, okay, that looks a little bit better. Um, maybe I want to expand out. I can zoom out and brighten up that whole area. I can adjust the contrast. I can adjust the saturation. Again, you need to be sparing. And then structure if I want to. Um, Let's say I wanted to make the, my metal, the little, my Ragnar metal. I can click the plus sign at the bottom and add another drop point, another anchor, and begin to edit this section. Make it brighter. It's contrast. And to that, I can drop another anchor here and begin to affect this area in the back. So you can... If you have something and you've done some adjustments, let's say I had, if I went back to this anchor here by my face and I moved it up, but I also wanted to, all of those adjustments that I made to brightness, saturation, contrast structure, I didn't want to have to redo them all. One thing I can do is tap it, click copy, click somewhere else, boop, and paste, and it will take the same settings that I had in the one that I copied from and apply it to that area. So that is an option there. So the, this can be really powerful in terms of, let's say I really wanted to bring out the saturation of my shirt. I can copy it, also pop it here. and I start to um, affect my photo. Again, I can whoop, move it, hold, force hold to see what it looks like before and after, before and after, How, however you like it. And I'm not saying that this is a photo that I'm absolutely happy with, but let's just move on from here. This is where you can bring in um, some vignette again, bring in some inner brightness, Drop that outer brightness, How, however you like. Um, so those are some editing options on faces and photographs. I did want to show you text. I know we're coming down to the last 15 minutes. So the text options in Snapseed are not the most comprehensive. You don't have a slew of options. There are other apps that I love to use when I'm adding text. Of course, Canva, I love Canva. Um, there's one called Word Splash that I really love uh, because I like the ease and the options. So sometimes if I'm in Snapseed and I'm just like, I wanna get everything done while I'm here, I will use some of the presets in Snapseed for text. So double tap here to change. So I'm going to say, Happy Monday. Click OK. Now, by 
dragging around the screen. I can move it to where I like. I can pinch and zoom to make it bigger and smaller. Down at the bottom, there's a picture of a palette, a painter's palette. I can play with some of the colors that are down there. If I go all the way here, oh, there's the invert option, which I don't want to use here. Um, sometimes, depending on, uh, I used to have gradiated gradients, rather. Don't see them, so we're just going to go on. Um, Let's find a color that I think reads okay. I'm just gonna go from here. Um, and then we're gonna, if I, you see a bunch of sort of what looks like cards down at the bottom, there are presets. And all I'm doing is pinching and zooming and dragging around um, my page and taking a look at what's there. Now I can't move these things around. I can double go back up, double click, and maybe I want to drop Monday to the bottom. So I have a little bit of um, artistic control in those ways, but again, Snapseed is really best for photo editing. This is not, not the most comprehensive in terms of when you want to add text, but you do have some options. And again, if you're just looking to get something done, really, you know, you're trying to get something done, you're like, let me go ahead and add the text. I, I, you can go ahead and do that. Now, um, another thing that Snapseed is really great for, um, if you do like to take photographs, you have a, a bigger camera that you like to use Snapseed or using Snapseed and your, your phone, your digital photography on your phone or your a tablet can be your, your go-to. Like, let me get some shots and see if it's worth getting out the camera, see if it's worth setting up the tripod, um, trying to see, do I need to go in farther on this subject? Um, are there telephone poles in the background or trees that are going to distract? Um, and it will give you a good starting point. But so much already can be done, um, even within Snapseed. The best camera, they say, is the camera that's in your hands. So whatever you have, you can use and absolutely make the best of. Um, let me see if there's anything else specific. All right, so I think Sarah's here. I'm going to use her photo. I took some of Sarah's wonderful uh, product with me on my cruise. Um, so. Sarah has beehives, and from those hives, she makes some lotions and some other wonderful things, and I loved it. So one thing on this photo that I might do um, is use my selective tool to really bring up the name of her business. Don't want to oversaturate that. And then I might even want to add some vignette. Don't want the outer brightness to be too crazy. Bring up the inner brightness a little bit. And you can kind of see that the, I'm not really square on the horizon. You can kind of see where, um, yeah. Now I can use those lines to kind of add some balance to the horizon so that it's not wonky in terms of, no, yeah. So that you get the idea. You can kind of go in and play with it. And if you want to undo, take your edit back. Um, I can use, let me just throw HDR scape. You can see what it does really hardcore um, in terms of high, high def. Um, it's really very, very stylized. I don't, I don't get into it too, too much. Same with frames, um, they're kind of old school, I wouldn't more worry about it. Black and white, you can have some real fun with black and white. Um, again, this is sort of a specialized uh, type of photography, depending on what you're trying to do. Um, we could do a whole course on just black and white photography or tonal photography. Um, if I click that drama tool, similar to that HDR tool, it really goes kind of hardcore on you. Same with your grunge and your uh, retro lux, while you do have some editing capabilities within each of them, 
glamour glow can be nice. You can add some some nice glamour, just some kind of soft gauziness sometimes to a photo. Um, and I could even pull that glow down. Just, uh, just a question of that. So now I would have some space if I wanted to add some words at the top. Um, if I were going to use this as a piece of advertising and I wanted to make sure that my logo was on it, um, this that would be where you might pull in a different app to overlay. This is maybe where your Canva is going to come in. There are ways to do it, but in this case, <clears throat> to really, really keep it simple, yeah. This is ambiance. Oh, look at that. Ambiance is so lovely. It's such a great, that's one of my favorite tools um, is that ambiance option. And then if I thought, well, my hand looks a little dark, I can always go in with that select tool. And brighten it up some. So it's just really, there's so many things that you can do. And I, I hope that you will have some time to, to get into this app and play with some of the, the options that you have um, and really make some beautiful photos, uh, keeping in mind some of the concepts that we opened with in terms of composition. So your subject and background, your sense of balance, that's your rule of thirds, different points of view, and a degree of simplicity. So with the last roughly 10 minutes, I'm going to stop screen sharing and um, open it up to any questions. Nicole, the only thing that I see, if you'll just confirm the two resources you mentioned, Canva was the other one, Word Splash? <laughs> Uh, word, yes, Word Splash. Uh, let me, oh, I'm sorry, Word Swag. And let me drop it in there. So Word Swag, there is a free version and there I, I, I get the paid version uh, just because I use it a lot. Um, and I don't like when I see the, their watermark, which if you use something for free, they have the right to use their watermark, but it bothers me to see their mark on there. So um, uh, Word Swag and I, pretty sure that they have a video story swag. So I don't use story swag as often. Uh, again, word swag, very similar to Canva in giving you lots of font options and ways to um, uh, use preset photos. So if you're looking for great photos that are already free to use that are things like Unsplash or Pixabay, where there are tons of free photos already available that you don't have to worry about um, necessarily giving credit. They're um, part of the public domain. Um, Word Swag and Story Swag will offer you the option for free photos and free backgrounds. So uh, we could maybe do another course just on Word Swag or those kinds of, and there are so many. And now that we've even talked about it, now that you've attended this or downloaded Snapseed, you'll start to see, I'm sure, advertisements as you're scrolling through your own feeds for other photo editing apps, because it's like, aha, this is something that this person is interested in. And so now you're going to be targeted with those kinds of things. And there, there, there are so many out there, so many now you have to pay like a monthly fee for. Um, another reason I really love um, Snapseed is that it is free. All the things about it are free. And um, it's very intuitive in terms of how to navigate. So once you understand Snapseed, when you start to use some of the other editing apps, you're like, oh yeah, I do like this in Snapseed. So you'll start to see some similarities if you're using um, even Photoshop, there are some similarities um, in some of the other um, higher end photo editing uh, software. You'll see a lot of those things already available in Snapseed. So for some folks, it's it's sort of the gateway to photo editing where they're like, I didn't know that I could do these things or that I would enjoy it. It's a great place to start. As I said, it's free. It's easy to use um, across um, pretty much all platforms. And um, it's very forgiving in terms of if you want to undo something, it's very easy to do. And 
um, you can spend a long time in, it's a really a rabbit hole that you can go down and, and spend a whole lot of time editing. For making reels, um, I see the question in there. For making reels, um, I tend to, um, I do use uh, the um, sto story swag some for that. I When I'm making reels, I tend to just make it in Instagram. Um, and when I make a TikTok, I tend to make it in TikTok only because it seems like they are happier with you when you make it that way um, and how they um, how they reward you in the algorithm. So uh, I, when it comes to Reels, I've just been using Reels. When it comes to TikToks, I've been coming, I've been just using TikTok. And of course, you can make the video yourself and then pull that video in. Um, to whatever, if you're making a reel and you're pulling it in, you've you've got the the raw video, uh, you can pull it into your Instagram and you can pull that same video into your TikTok. Um, but I there's not one that I specifically always go to the way that I go to Snapseed for photo editing. How do we know it makes it? We don't. We just keep we keep throwing things at the algorithm and see what it likes, see what it wants to nibble on, and see what it rejects. So, um, yeah, they they keep it that way because, well, they don't want to give you the secret recipe, and they don't want anybody to have it, so they keep changing it. So we keep chasing the dragon. anything else that I can help with? We've got a couple minutes. I hope that you all have fun with Snapseed and, and I hope that you've learned something, um, even one little thing, because sometimes it can make all the difference and like, oh, I wanted to always do that. I have this photo. I absolutely want, I didn't get to show you the, um, I said I was going to, and I didn't, uh, the healing tool. Uh, if you have something in a photo that you want to remove, check out the healing tool. It's not going to help you remove something huge, but sometimes a blemish um, or, you know, a piece of hair that's out of place. Or um, I had one that I was going to show you. Uh, I was taking a picture on the beach of a man playing guitar, but behind him is a random shoe. I don't know whose shoe that is. I don't know where it came from, but it distracts me when I'm looking at it. So I played with it and I was able to edit out that shoe. So it wasn't great. L luckily, it was on the sand and there were shadows. So it was, it was fine. There was no longer a giant red shoe in the photo. Um, and that the, the way that the sand was affected was far less distracting than the random red shoe that I wish I'd seen when I was taking the picture. Again, the, the camera is objective. It does not care that there's a shoe. My subjective brain was so enamored with the man playing guitar on the beach that my subjective eye overlooked the red shoe, but my objective camera was glad to show me it when I got back home. So if, if you find yourself in those situations, check out the brush tool, or I'm sorry, the healing tool. Um, and if you wanna Google how to use that healing tool, I'm sure you can find some tutorials on that specific tool if that's a, a desire that you have, or just get in there and play with it. But I've removed many a zit from photos um, with that when you're just like why why did I have like I want this picture but this big old thing and um, you don't want it saved forever and ever for eternity that that particular day you were having a breakout so there are some some little things that you can fix with the healing tool um, it is healing not a healer so um, I, I I encourage you to play with that a little bit more as well Thank you, Richard. It was nice to meet everyone. Um, please reach out if you have any specific questions or anything else that I can help with. Um, I'm here for it. Thank you so much, Nicole. What a, lots of little nuggets to dig into and another great tool that we can plug and play. And thank you all for posting different ideas and thoughts in the chat. It's always great. We can all learn from each other of different resources that all help us along our journey in life. So we look forward to seeing you all at a future event, our workshop or program that we're offering. And like Nicole said, don't hesitate to reach out. I'll be in touch um, later today or first thing tomorrow with some follow-up and a few notes that I jotted down from today's workshop. And we're all here. If you're not in our service area, feel free to reach out and I'm glad to connect you with our colleagues across the Commonwealth. 
I will also include a link in the follow-up email to the scheduling service that covers the entire state. Um, it'll show you the S, um, Small Business Development Center, the SBDC, closest to you and where your business is located. Well, with that, thank you all so much. I hope everyone has a great rest of your day and a great week ahead, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Thanks, everyone.